In this video, we'll look at phase changes and energy. Before we get into phase change, we have to review what the states of matter are. So the states of matter are based off of their potential energy. Potential energy is the form of energy that is part of our intermolecular forces, and it tends to draw the molecules closer together. So the stronger the intermolecular forces are between the molecules, the more potential energy it has. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with the random motion of these molecules. And our kinetic energy tends to disperse the molecules, tends to pull them apart. And this brings us to the state of matters. Remember, we have a gas, which is highly compressible and depends on the shape and the volume of the container. It has a high ability to flow. So gases have very little intermolecular force, which means they have a very little potential energy and a lot of kinetic energy. We can think gases have a really high kinetic energy. So then we get to liquids. Liquids conform to the shape of the container, but their volume is limited. So liquids I can't compress together, they have some intermolecular forces. So they have some potential energy, some kinetic energy. Solids on the other hand, solids maintain their own shape and volume. Can't compress a solid and the solid does not flow. So a solid has lots of potential energy. So if we think about our kinetic to potential energy, gases have the highest kinetic energy and therefore the lowest potential. And then we go down to solids, which have the highest potential energy and the lowest kinetic because they're not moving around much. And then so changing between the phases, we have different phases to look at. We can go from a solid to a liquid, that would be melting or fusion, and then from a liquid to a gas, that would be vaporization. Or we can do the opposite process and go from a gas to a liquid, that would be condensation. Or you can go from a liquid to a solid, and that would be freezing. And so we can think about the energy as we're changing these. We're going from mostly potential energy, kind of 50-50-ish, if we want to think that way, to mostly kinetic energy. We also don't have to stop at the liquid phase. We can go straight from a solid to a gas, and that's sublimation. Or we can go straight from a gas into a solid, and that would be deposition. And so if we look at this, we can think I need to add energy to go up here. And the way we add energy in chemistry is I need to add heat. And then if I add even more heat, I need to add more to go from a liquid to a gas. But then if we go from the gas down to the solid or gas to liquid, we're gonna lose energy because we're going from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. And so if we remember our sign convention, if heat's positive, then that means we have to add heat to the system. Which means if we add heat to the system, it's entering the system, so it's endothermic. So that means going from a solid to a liquid is actually an endothermic process because I have to add heat into it. And then going from the gas down to the solid, the heat's exiting the system. So it's a minus sign. So it leaves the system, which means it's exothermic. because our heat is leaving our system there.
So going from a gas to the solid, that's an exothermic process. And so when we're looking at a phase change, this is an example of a phase change diagram. And we'll get to see more of these later. But if we're going from our gas down to our solid, say we're taking water vapor and we're cooling it down to ice. During that process, we can start at 130 degrees and we cool it down to 100 degrees. It's still gas phase. But then something happens at 100 degrees. It starts changing from a gas to a liquid. So the system continues to release heat until it's released enough heat that it's all liquid and then that liquid can cool down even further. When that liquid cools down to zero degrees, then it starts to convert from a liquid into a solid. Once it loses enough energy to completely be solid, then it can cool that solid down even further. And we'll see this phase change diagram again later on. So looking at our states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. And I wanna think about changing between these different matters. So remember solids have defined volumes and shapes. Liquids have defined volumes, but undefined shapes. Gases have undefined volumes and undefined shapes. And so we're gonna look a little closer at all these different phase changes going between these different phases here. And remember to go from our ice to our vapor. So from our solid to our gas, it's going to take energy from the environment. And then going from that gas back to that solid, it's going to release energy into the environment. And so looking at this first phase change, we're going between the liquid and gas phase. So in that process of going between liquid and gas, we can do an evaporation or it's also called a vaporization. This is when This is when we start with our liquid and we heat it up enough and we add enough heat to maintain the pressure needed for vaporization. So we have to add enough energy into the system here to break the intermolecular forces that are holding the molecules together. Once we do enough to break the intermolecular forces, the molecules can escape the liquid phase and go into the gas phase. And the opposite process, condensation, is when we go from the gas phase into the liquid phase. So this is a transition from a gas to a liquid. And it occurs when the gas particles can no longer escape the container that they're in. And so when our gas particle here comes in contact with the liquid, it'll get stuck. So the intermolecular forces will bind it together and keep it as a liquid now. And so that's an exothermic process because the molecule here is releasing energy into the surroundings. Well, it slowly loses its, its kinetic energy and then it binds with the liquid and starts getting more potential energy. And so this brings us back to our boiling points to one of our physical properties. So the boiling point occurs when the vapor pressure equals the external pressure of the atmosphere. And then that would be considered our boiling point. So if we look at our diagram here, we can see the different boiling points. And you can see they really have to do with their intermolecular forces too. The stronger the intermolecular forces like water, the harder it is to break those forces and go from the liquid phase to the gas phase. That's why it has a higher boiling point. Methane, which we know only has dispersion forces, has a very low boiling point because there isn't much force they're holding it together versus the hydrogen bonding that water does. When we look at the liquid solid phase change, that's what happens when we go between a liquid to a solid. And so that's the freezing point or the melting point. The freezing point, if we're going from the liquid to the solid, the melting point, if we're going from the solid to the liquid. And so looking at the freezing point, when something freezes, it converts from a liquid to a solid. The kinetic energy decreases. 
when it's cooled. So the molecules start moving around a lot less. They start having less kinetic energy. And then the average kinetic energy, when it becomes low enough, those molecules start to become fixed in place, which is how we get our solid state. And then this is the temperature, which we call the freezing point, when our molecules get locked into their position and create a solid state. The opposite, melting, is when we go from the solid to the liquid. So you can see it's the reverse of freezing. It's also called fusion sometimes. And so the melting point is gonna be the same temperature as the freezing point. We're just looking at the opposite process. And so some metals like gallium, their melting points are so low. So their intermolecular forces holding together are so low that the heat from your hand can actually melt it. And so our next phase change, our last phase change that we're looking at is gas to solid phase. A slightly more unusual one, doesn't happen quite as often. And so that's when under certain circumstances, we can go from the solid state directly to the gas state. And that's called sublimation. Carbon dioxide and iodine are two solids that actually do this under normal conditions. So carbon dioxide, that's also known as dry ice. So it looks like an ice cube but it doesn't melt. So that's why they consider it dry. And then iodine, if you heat it up, it starts to form a gas. You can see it's forming this purple gas. Then I'll go from that gas back to the solid if you have something cold right here. And so that opposite process is the deposition. So that's when we go from a gas directly to a solid. So that'd be going from our gas here back to the solid state. So it's the reverse of sublimation, which means after iodine sublimes, it undergoes deposition to go back to the solid state. We don't actually end up with liquid iodine. And so we can see these phase changes occurring in our heating and cooling curves. So with the heating and cooling curve, we have evaporation or condensation. It's going from our gas to our liquid and that's what the flat lines are. That's when we're actually going through that phase change. The slopes, that's when we're just changing temperature. But the flat lines here, that's when we're actually causing that phase change to occur. That's where the phase change happens. And it's the flat portions that we can tell what the melting point is or the boiling point. And so a cooling curve is when you start at a higher temperature and go down to a lower one. So heat is being constantly removed from the system to cause these phase changes. The opposite, a heating curve is when we start at a low temperature and we keep heating it to go higher. We can still see we're doing those same phase changes. And so this happens when heat is continuously added to our system. And so now you should be able to kind of recognize different phases, look at a phase diagram or heating or cooling curve and figure out what those different phases are on the diagram.